joining me live. I am getting ready to like cook some meatballs in a crock pot with this amazing cauliflower smash. Okay, so it's gonna be kind of like smashed potatoes, but it's really gonna be cauliflower. So I hope you guys enjoy this and thank you guys for joining. And also I wanted to say that I, my name is Missy Mo and I am, a health and fitness coach and I am so excited to help you figure out how to do this all right and crock potting is like super easy okay so I'm gonna make these crock pot meatballs and we're gonna go from there all right so hope you guys are having an awesome Tuesday I am thinking about doing this like every Tuesday hey Mark thanks for joining and um, so we're gonna take a pound of like this gra grass-fed beef, all right? And this is a um, fat burner recipe, all right? And so I'm gonna put it in this bowl and then I'm gonna uh, basically add a quarter cup of onions to it. All right, one little precious egg yolk. Already separated it. All right, and then some garlic powder. It calls for a teaspoon, the recipe that I'm using, but I'm gonna use a half a teaspoon, and I'm just gonna sprinkle it, because I don't really measure anything. And then I'm gonna use this awesome Flavor God, uh, Garlic Lovers. Um, basically, it's for garlic lovers, and it's a mixture of like garlic and onions and sea salt and um, California chili pepper powder basil leaves, black pepper, coriander powder, parsley flakes, and thyme. All right, so just a little bit of that. All right, and then of course, uh, some, some regular pepper. I'm gonna add a few twists of that. And then him, here's some pink Himalayan salt, or you can use uh, sea salt. All right, and then now to get messy. Okay. <laughs> I took my rings off before we got started. So, anyway, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy this. This is like super easy. I love crock potting because it like saves on time, but the prep is the only thing that kind of takes time, if you know what I mean. All right, so I gotta make like, I'm gonna make 16 to 20 meatballs with this one pound of ground beef. All right. And so dinner should be ready by seven, which is perfect for us. Okay, so now that's all mixed up. I'm gonna try to get these, I guess they gotta be little, I don't know. <laughs> Let's see, all right. So I could, have all, I could have done some of this stuff before, but I thought it would be kind of cool. I don't know how you feel about this, making the meatballs live here. <laughs> on TV, on like on this live broadcast. So anyway, and this is the first time that I make this recipe, so I'm hoping it's gonna be really good. And so of course it's going to take some time because I'm gonna go ahead and do that smashed cauliflower as well. And I have to make this awesome uh, sauce. And um, Basically, we're gonna, we'll just put it together and then we'll kind of go from there. Hey there, who joined? <laughs> hey, Emmy, how are you? Like, thanks for coming on. All right, and so, anyway, so I've been doing this like cooking lately and it's been going rather well. <laughs> it's kind of a little bit different because as you guys know, um, we tend to eat out a lot, all right? Um, I tend to know how to order whenever I am ordering out. And um, so I, I pick like good things, but it's always good to like have a few meals that you cook at home, I find anyway. And it's been kind of cool doing this for like the last three weeks kind of, like just making a few meals during the week that I can do now. There is not 16 meatballs right here, so these meatballs are gonna be smaller, so I gotta like bring them on down. <laughs> so like I'm breaking them in half now. <laughs> but hey, this is live, right? So <laughs> can't expect perfection from live. <laughs> anyway.
Anyway, so they're kind of like small. Okay, so does that make make sense? So I guess it's like a, like maybe like a two or a one and a half inch little meatball. And I put the purple onions in there. It called for yellow onions, but I didn't have yellow onions. So I like the flavor of um, basically of the purple onion. So I am totally okay with that. I don't know about it, you guys, but that's kind of how I roll. I just kind of like do what I need to do to get things done. <laughs> All right. So, and let's see what else. So anyway, so um, the reason you can use any type of ground meat that you would like, but I started, you know, really paying attention to what I've been putting in my body lately, just because there's so many factors that are coming into play and you know the more educated that you are and that you get as a result of like eating healthy new things come out all the time new literature new research and stuff and so what i found is doing i'd already kind of switched over to the whole like organic more organic more um whole foods eating more whole foods and i had never really switched over i kind of dabbled in it with the whole grass-fed, um, grass-finished beef and trying to eat, um, you know, the wild-caught salmon, tuna, different things like that. So, because what I found in this um, recent program that I started was a ton of information and research on all the different things that we get we basically ingest or take into our bodies whenever we're not necessarily paying attention to those things and so sometimes um not i mean most of the time like if you are someone that is having trouble like you know losing weight or getting you know like especially that midsection like around your abs um that visceral fat that has developed over the years maybe and you just started like a program and maybe you're just having a hard time, you're doing everything right, but there's something that's not happening. Like you're not, you know, you had like some weight loss and you had some good results like in the beginning, but then something happened and you were at like a stand, you're like at a standstill, like at a plateau. And so you've changed up your workout routine and I mean, you can't eat any less, right? Because we don't want you to go under like 12 to 1400 calories at the bare minimum and you know if you're already in shape and you are actively working out you shouldn't go less than 1600 calories a day right but let's just say that you are thinking oh my god I got to exercise more and eat less well if you do that then you're gonna like jack with your metabolism for lack of a better words and you don't want to do that so what I started researching and finding out through this program that I'm doing is that all of like commercially, I guess, grade foods um, that are processed, um, even, even meat and stuff that you're not really paying attention to are loaded with hormones and different chemicals and additives just like some of the processed foods are. And let me wash my hands real quick, quick. And that may be the cause of what's going on with your body. And it's just unfortunately the way um, the way things are, especially with our Western um, culture and what we have like done with all of our food. And so that's basically what I'm learning and it's it's a wealth of information and so, I'm ready to start sharing it because I just, you know, finished like 12 weeks of doing this and had amazing, you know, results and I feel better. I'm much more clear headed. I don't have that brain fog. And it's because I started paying attention to what I was putting in my body, even more so than I had already done. Um, because I had always, I've always eaten, eaten, well, in the last three and a half years, I've always eaten in like the 1600 to 1800 calorie bracket. I never went below that other than like one week. Um, two years ago whenever I was shredding down for a cruise and I had done like hammer and chisel and then which is a, one of the workouts that I do and uh, I you know 
was chiseling down and so I had to shred down to like 1200 to 1400 calories, real low carb and um, you know, high protein, not a lot of fat. But what happened was is that, you know, that's good for a while and it was great about that. It was great for the cruise and you know, had that rocking body and everything, but it wasn't sustainable. And I knew that because my coach told me that it wasn't gonna be sustainable and that I need to get my head wrapped around there. And so I had the abs popping, all that good stuff was happening and it was great, I rocked it. But the thing is, is that, like I said, that's just not something that's sustainable. And so if you're having like issues with not so much that, but just like, how do you like lose that fat that's around your midsection? Okay, I'm gonna pump these in the crock pot, okay? Next, we're gonna make the sauce, all right? Um, but anyway, so all of those things can like play, all those you know, chemicals and different things can like wreak havoc on you because basically we are what we eat. And um, whenever they, whenever a like, whenever livestock is, you know, being like mass produced, so to speak, and they're like in feedlots and different things like that, they are eating like, you know, um, you know, they want to get, we want, we want to grow our cattle to where they're faster. I mean, they're, they're growing faster and they are growing bigger. Well, it's, they feed them a lot of, um, a lot of feed that maybe has like genetically modified items in it and also like hormones in it and also different things to like help the cows grow faster. <laughs> and so that's not necessarily good for us because what they take in, we take in too. And so that may explain why you may be at a standstill because your hormones, which are directly affected by the hormones that are being given to the livestock um, in these feedlots, is, is affecting you and, so, and your body. And so that's the part that I find fascinating because it makes so much sense because I have so many people that come to me whenever they are turning like 40 and or 43 and they they tell me they like everything was fine until I turned 40 and they all want to blame it on menopause they you know oh I'm premenopausal and yeah sometimes that might be the case or what have you but oftentimes it's not that at all but society has taught us that society has drilled that in our heads that that's what it is that's what it, you're just getting older you're not supposed to like look healthy you're not supposed to you know be having all this energy and everything you're getting old you know old okay what is that okay i'm 47 years old i don't plan on getting old in that number i mean age is just a number right and so that's the thing that we have to concentrate on we have to take care of ourselves and we have the power to make choices and we have the power to like make decisions about our nutrition and that's where it all starts. And yes, is it an investment? Of course it's an investment, but you are worth it. I am worth it. And I know that I feel so much better whenever I am taking care of myself. Okay, so now we're gonna go over to the skillet and we're gonna make this, um, let's see. We're gonna make this amazing uh, sauce. <laughs> okay, let's see how we do this. All right, so I'm gonna put, um, let's see. Um, <laughs> okay, I need a half a cup of coconut milk, right? Oh my goodness, okay. And then I come up here. cup of beef broth and I get the organic beef broth. Alright. And this again is like grass fed beef broth, low sodium. Alright. And then 
10 ounces of white uh, crostini mushrooms. And these are frozen, so I defrosted them. And there they are. And then a tablespoon of ghee. And ghee is a ghee that is clarified butter. And this is from um, pasture raised cows. All right. And hopefully, I like a tablespoon in here. And a full tablespoon. Okay. I didn't even look at this recipe before I started this, but I can already tell this is going to be yummy. All right. <laughs> All right. What else? Let's see. Oh, sea. I need sea salt or Himalayan salt. And we left. Basically, a half of a teaspoon of black pepper and a half, I mean a quarter teaspoon of black pepper and a half teaspoon of, teaspoon of sea salt, okay? So I'm just gonna again do my eye thing because, you know, being from Louisiana, we kind of know how many turns. I don't really like to measure anything. <laughs> and then we kind of season as we go, basically. That's just part of our culture, you know, but of course you have like the written ingredients that you follow. And then let's see what else. Oh, and a tablespoon of, it calls for arrowroot flour, but I didn't have any. So a substitute for that is going to be tapioca flour. And I got this at Whole Foods, but you can get this, you know, anywhere. And this is just basically going to get a thickener for it. And then I am going to... Basically, whisk it all together. I think I was supposed to slowly add some things to it, but I just put it all in together. <laughs> I tend to do that. I don't know if you guys do that or not, but I do. All right. So, let me just kind of show you what it looks like. Doesn't that look? Can you see? I don't know if you can see. But anyway, it looks yummy. Looks yummy. <laughs> and if you have any questions, guys, y'all please feel free to like um, put them in the comments below. And if I can see them while we're going, I'll answer them. But if you can't, then I mean, if I can't see them, then I will answer. Promise, answer everything that you need afterwards. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna cook that for two minutes and then um, an additional four to five minutes. And I'm gonna take half of that sauce and I'm gonna put it over the meatballs in the crock pot and then I'm gonna put the cover on, okay? My crock pot's already on so the meatballs are already kinda of getting going. Um, and then the next thing I'm gonna do is I have um, some riced cauliflower already. Uh, it was frozen and I bought this at, you can get this pretty much anywhere. And I'm going to go ahead and put that in here, in this saucepan. And it calls for a whole head of cauliflower. So I figured that I would use both of these containers. Um, all right. Let's see. And then basically I'm going to add some salt to it. It wouldn't help if I turned it on. Some salt and pepper. Because this is going to be the cauliflower smash, which I cannot wait to try. And if you have it, this replaces like your mashed potatoes, but it's all about the seasoning and getting it just right. But I'm going to add like the ghee butter to it, a tablespoon of that, and um, it's going to come out phenomenal. So let's see. Um, and then basically I'm gonna have the meatballs and the sauce on top of the cauliflower smash. So it's gonna be great. All right, what else? Let's see. Um, yeah, so after this cooks, grab my things. After it's cooked into like a food processor but I have one of these handy dandy things like that I used to make my shake with a long time ago you may still have one of these in your kitchen but you can definitely use it um, for, it's great for like butternut squash uh, soups 
or any kind of soups like that. Oh wait, wow, I'll tell one. Yes, I'll share the recipe below, Mark. Thanks for asking. Um, and I think you'll like it too, it's really good. So I'm hoping it kind of comes out like with the flavor of, um, of like Swedish meatballs, right? Isn't that great? <laughs> or like a beef stroganoff, but with meatballs and no noodles, right? <laughs> so I, I'm thinking that's what it's gonna kind of come out like. But oh my gosh, y'all, y'all should see this. Okay, this is great. Okay, and I think Chris just got home, so I'm live. <laughs> All right, great, I'm live right now. Oh. <laughs> I'm cooking show. <laughs> All right, like I said, this is like grilled, guys. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Mm, I think that's pretty much it. Other than we're gonna cook this, and then I'm gonna like make it into like this smashed cauliflower. All right, this needs to go low. Okay, so I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna like portion half of it into the crock pot over the meatballs. I better do a ladle, use a ladle. <laughs> That's a pressure cooker, like I don't know if you have one at Instapot, but it's a pressure cooker and a um, crock pot all in one. And uh, it's pretty handy. I, the recipe just said for a crock pot, so I didn't want to try it live for the first time in the Instapot, but I will the next time I do it. And then I will uh, share that you can do it with an Instapot because there's recipes for Instapots that um, the meatballs like for the Instapots and so you can just use that same timing but I just don't know what it is exactly. It's probably like 10 minutes and like a quick release or like a slow release of 10 minutes which is quick and easy but I want to just do it like this. All right, let's see if I'm missing anything. All right. Okay, I need another tablespoon of this ghee. All right, and if you haven't tried ghee, this is amazing stuff. It's like clarified butter and it is awesome. You can put it in your coffee I don't drink coffee anymore, but I um, I put it in my tea every now and then, and I blend it up, and so it's kind of like bullet coffee, if or bullet tea, and that's like super yummy if you haven't tried that yet. But it's a great um, it's a great little treat for in the morning, and you're not having you know um, your coffee made or your cream because if you you know you probably you know if you're looking. You know, if you're watching your, you know, your health and fitness and you've probably already gotten rid of, you know, your, um, uh, basically having like cream, you know, any of that process, those chemicals and stuff. Now you can have like, if you're doing a high fat, low carb diet, you can um, have, you know, heavy whipping cream, which you'll see a lot of people put in recipes online like HWC. And so, like, the other day, since I'm just kind of, like, getting into this, I was like, what is HWC? I think my friend um, posted it on his uh, website, James Berthelot. I don't know if you guys know him. But uh, he's, like, big into, he's, like, lost over, like, 100 pounds. Amazing. And he's been doing a high-fat, low-carb uh, diet. And he um, watches his carbs. And... Uh, so he was like, he had that all over his uh, his recipe that he was sharing and um, his tips on his page. And I was like, oh my God, what is this? And so it was like so simple. I think someone asked about it and it was like, it's heavy whipping cream. So it was like quick and easy anyway. Oh, I think my daughter just joined. Hey, McKenzie. Hey, Amy. <laughs> Tell Doug I said hi. <laughs> anyway, um, so hopefully this cauliflower 
is going to cook down. Let me see if I have some more ghee, because I need to put maybe a little bit more. Okay, so I don't have any more ghee, but I do have some um, grass-fed butter. And you can get this at the store. tablespoon because I had about a half a tablespoon of the ghee so that make if that makes sense to you all right let's see All right, so we're almost done. All right, so the next thing I have to do is just put this in a food processor or use my handy dandy little tool. <laughs> like head of, um, of cauliflower, but I just did it for time's sake by putting my rice cauliflower already in the pot. And if you do the whole head, then you roast it, you chop it up with the large stems removed and you roast it in the oven at 400 for, um, it says 15 to 17 minutes. So it's still like a quick and easy process, right? Hey Chris, <laughs> glad you're on. And uh, let's see, this is what we're having for dinner. <laughs> All right, and so um, we just have to wait for the meatballs to cook. And so I am going to wait to use my emulsifier um, after this cooks down. So you can kind of see it, but so basically to plate it, what I'll do is I'll have, I guess I can do it, let's see. We shall see how this goes, okay? <laughs> um, <laughs> I think it's soft enough. Let's see. Okay. Let me add a little bit of water. There may be a secret reason why they're saying put it in a food processor. <laughs> Blender, <laughs> high powered blender. Okay, a little bit more water. <laughs> anyway, so just keep stirring this. Have you, have you guys ever um, like used the, the uh, rice cauliflower? <laughs> because it is super easy. Like I'll do like a stir fry. I'll make like um, ground beef and like um, the rice cauliflower instead of, the, instead of just like regular rice. And it will be fantastic. I use like liquid aminos, which is, um, it brags liquid aminos, which is like a soy sauce. It has a soy, a soy sauce flavor. And there's also like a coconut aminos. And oh my gosh, that is super good. And you can like add veggies to it. And, um, it just kind of comes out to be like a little Asian meal and it's quick and super easy. So I'll do that one. I think I did a live on that one as well before, but that was like super easy. Okay, so I am thinking Okay, I'm gonna try this with this emulsifier and we're gonna see how it goes. It's 
working, but it's like a slow process. excited it worked and I didn't make a mess <laughs> all right look at the consistency do you see that that's pretty cool right okay it's probably gonna be hot okay so I myself am gonna add a little bit of this coconut milk to it just a little bit just to make it a little bit more creamy if I had the heavy whipping cream, I would probably add about two tablespoons to it. So I just added about a tablespoon and a half of this. I kind of like just eyeballed it. Um, so, and it's just gonna make it a little bit more creamier. But the flavor's good. I didn't make a mess. <laughs> I'm cooking, girl. So, <laughs> hey, Jenny. I'm cooking some meatballs and, in my crock pot. And then I did this cauliflower mash, which is basically like a kind of like a mashed potato hack because it's not mashed potato, so no carbs. Um, well, there's a little bit of carbs, of course, in cauliflower, but nothing like white potatoes. So, it looks like it's really good. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of this flavor, the Flavor God Garlic Lovers, because Chris and I really like garlic. I don't know about you guys, but I think this will just add like a little, just a little sprig of it. And then I have this nutritional yeast, which it also adds like a great flavor to it, just kind of to give it just a little bit of zing. And so I'll add this. These are the modifications that I'm making to this recipe, so I'll add this in the recipe um, below that I'll post for y'all, okay? But this is gonna be super yummy. And I'm gonna plate it basically, in, I'm gonna plate it on plates, and then I'm gonna um, put the meatballs on top of it. Uh, it looks like I, about, it makes like four servings. So I will plate it and divide the meatballs up, and then I'm gonna put the sauce, which is the mushrooms and that yummy sauce, um, on top of it. So that should be it. So this is dinner, and as soon as these meatballs are cooked, um, it'll be all done. All right, so if you like this recipe, I'm thinking about doing this, guys, like every Tuesday and, um, you know, coming on here live with a recipe or like some kind of like tips, like health tips 
as far as like food goes on Tuesdays. It'll be Tuesdays or Wednesdays. Um, but we'll, I'll get a set schedule and share it with you guys. So if you like this format, let me know because I want to help you guys um, figure out all this, you know, clean eating and all of this, you know, this food and what to do and how to prep and how to, um, you know, make things happen in the kitchen for you because, you know, that's what it's all about. If you can control your fork, then the other part's easy, all right? Because everybody can go walking, everybody can get their heart rate up for 30 minutes. It's usually the kitchen and the to go food that trips us up, right? And so if I can teach you some hacks and if I can teach you some tricks on what to do in the kitchen, then your success rate of getting healthier and um, living like the life that you want is gonna be so much easier and so much quicker. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please like comment below that you like this format. So I know some of you guys are watching, but in order for me to know to keep doing this, I need your input and it's really, really, really important. And I thank you so much in advance for sharing your input with me because that's what it's all about. I wanna be able to help you. And if I can do it in this way, then that's great. All right, um, and I have some other ideas up my sleeve about going on, going live like on Mondays and on Fridays um, to come up with some other cool things. And I'm also thinking of going live, um, doing a workout with you guys um, every, every Wednesday. So um, I'm super excited about that because I think it'll be really cool to have you guys work out with me. And uh, hopefully I've been asked this, you know, for quite some time and I just haven't really done it. I've posted videos and, you know, done uh, workouts that way. Um, okay, I will, Haley. <laughs> the it's not done yet. <laughs> I have my meatballs that are cooking, but basically I'm gonna plate the, I'm gonna show you how to do it, but basically I'm gonna plate the cauliflowers, uh, the cauliflower mash, and then I'm gonna put the meatballs on top and then I'm gonna put the sauce on top of it. But I'll, I'll um, definitely post a picture tonight um, whenever Chris and I eat. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. And again, let me know if those ideas sound right to you. Sound, sound like something that you would want. Like, would you want like low impact workouts? Would you like high intensity workouts? Would you like to do some core de forest or some country heat, you know, workouts? Since I'm certified in both of those, that might be fun. Like to just get your dance going on and follow along as I work out with country heat or do some, you know, badass kick moves in a quarter forest because you know that's what it's all about it's about moving your body and so that's what I want to help you with all right so if you love this please share the video save it to your wall and comment below and I will get back to you as soon as I get all the questions all right and um, I look forward to serving you guys and uh, making you and your life a better you know better um, and helping you out in any way I can all right Y'all have a great night and I will talk to y'all later. Bye.